Hey YouTubers, uh, just another quick video um, showing you all my overclocked Mega 500. Well, actually, it's not the Mega 500 that's overclocked, but the uh, 25 megahertz 68030 uh, accelerator card plugged into it. Um, so as stated, this is just a quick video, uh, just outlining how to overclock the ACA 1232. Um, and the kind of performance improvements you can expect. Uh, first of all, I guess we'll power on the Omega 500. Um, you'll see I've just got a temporary switch wired in here. It's not going to stay like this. This was just to experiment and make sure that the overclock actually worked. Just as a quick rundown, the way it works is, and it's probably not going to show up too well in this video because of the way the light is in the room, but that wire you see there is actually soldered onto a set of eight pads, or four pads in groups of two. And the way it works is printed on the back of the ACO1232 is a table, and it'll show you the kind of uh, the clock speeds you can achieve by shorting out various pads at the back of the card here in order to overclock both the processor and the RAM fitted to the board. Now the good thing about these ACA1232 accelerator cards is while they don't have an FPU fitted they're actually surprisingly fast and the reason for that is this newer generation RAM with faster memory controller. Now, the RAM is able to run blazing fast and uh, overclocked it's even faster still. I'm not sure on the speed of the RAM I would have to turn the car o card over to do that which I won't do at this point in time. Um, I can do if do it if anyone requests it but I won't do it at this point in time. Um, so yeah overclocked both the processor and the RAM it's actually quite a quick little Omega 500. So what we'll do is we'll switch Excuse that noise, that's my speakers. We'll switch the card into default clocks and boot the machine up. When we get to the usual ACA 500 configuration menu, press F1. And we're at the Mega 3.1 workbench. Now, as I open things, just try and pay attention as to uh, how fast the windows open and how fast the icons populate the windows at default clocks, just to get an idea when we switch to overclock mode, um, how fast, you know, how much quicker the system's actually running. So we go to system. Go to Tools and Sysinfo. We'll run Sysinfo just to give you an idea on how quick the machine is at default clocks. Okay, and you can see there at default clocks we're getting about 5,357 dry stones and about 5.59 MIPS. So all up you know, about halfway, you know, naturally between 5 and 10. And you can see that it's uh, about 2.84 times faster than Omega 600. We can expand that a little bit just to give a bit more of an idea. So there's the speeds we're achieving there. And you can see there 68030 running at 25 megahertz. So that's at default clocks. So now what we'll do, quit that. And I'll shut the machine down. And I'll switch this to overclock clock settings. Reboot. Okay. 
usual ACA 500 configuration menu. I don't know if you go into expert mode and hit tab, it shows system information. Uh, I don't think it's really telling us the speed. It's not telling us the speed of the processor though. But you get some information there, you can see a 680-30 is fitted. So anyway, we'll get out of that, boot the machine up. And as you can see, even in boot times, I'd have to say, I reckon in regards to boot times, it's about twice as fast as it was before even with the accelerator at default clocks. Um, now if we go to system again and just note how fast the icons populate the windows. So you can see it's a lot faster than it was before. We go to tools and sysinfo. Okay, now if we run the speed test again You can see that it's almost double. Um, getting 8,551 dry stones and 8.92 megaflops. So, you know, all in all, um, it's almost hitting you know, double the speed it was before. We can expand on that. You can see there it's a great deal faster than it was before. Um, if you look at the clock speed there, 680.30 at 42.7 megahertz. So it's running, you know, but pretty much double the clock speed it was before. And look, the machine handles it easily. I haven't had a single issue. You can run any game you want. WHD load. Oh. the speakers on there, hopefully they don't make too much noise. Um, geez, what have I got? Fire up Zool. We're in the game. Well, you can see it runs, you know, quite well. So that's a bit of Zool, we get out of that. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, rough and tumble, rough and tumble is a good one, I like that. There's a bit of rough and tumble. And even 3D games get a substantial performance boost. Look, as everyone knows, you, the Mega was a very powerful machine. It's day, but it was never really designed for first-person shooters as such. You fire up a bit of Doom. 
and it actually runs quite well. Much faster than the default clock speed. So you can see, you know, Doom actually running, you know, runs at a reasonably good speed, I think. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually really impressed at the way the Amiga handles these software rendered first person shooters. Now if I can just see this thing with one hand. So there's a bit of Doom. We'll get out of that. We can have a go at some uh, some Gloom Deluxe. Okay, so you can see, even at reasonable screen size, well, the game runs really well. There's no lag. Well, this is hard while well, filming at the same time, but you know, you get the idea. So that's a bit of gloom. So there you go guys, uh, just a quick rundown, just showing you my Amiga 500 equipped with a uh, Motorola 680-30 uh, running at an overclock speed of 42 me megahertz um, with a relative increase in um, fast RAM speed as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, see you next time.